Hey guys, it's a balmy 30 degrees in Raleigh today. Uh, tomorrow's supposed to be something like 18 degrees in the morning. I don't think I've moved far enough south. But uh, at any rate, today I'm driving the uh, refreshed 2017 Maserati Ghibli S. Uh, I don't know if I call it a, a refresh, although Maserati certainly is calling it a refresh. Uh, more than just uh, very minor enhancements is what they've done. So no visual enhancements. Uh, no powertrain enhancements. It's still powered by the same 3-liter twin turbo. Base car has 345 horsepower. Uh, the S that I'm driving right here has 404 horsepower with 406 foot-pounds of torque. I love this engine. It's great. It's made it to a ZF8 speed, uh, and the transmission is fantastic. This one's got sport package, so it's got uh, these paddle shifters, these beautiful stainless steel paddle shifters, uh, which with this red interior and this carbon inlays, is drop dead gorgeous i love it it looks amazing with the white exterior uh this car is definitely definitely a looker base price about seventy two thousand dollars uh for the base car and 80 grand for the s the one i'm driving is ninety two thousand dollars uh and has the driver assistance package which is one of the enhancements i was just talking about for 2017 um it's got drive assistance so it's got adaptive cruise blindside assist um, it's got some sort of collision warning stuff that most cars have nowadays, but it's kind of a first for Maserati because they've never really had any tech. Uh, and also the infotainment, so that's a big deal for Maserati because last year essentially, uh, you know, pissed a lot of people off because they're just using Chrysler technology, uh, the same stuff that's in a Dodge Dart, and uh, kind of rubbed some people the wrong way. I never really particularly cared what nav was in this thing but now that it's got the apple carplay uh and the android stuff it's really really good uh it's pretty easy to use although all these modern infotainment systems have a learning curve i don't know that there's a single one on the market that you just jump into uh, and you learn right away they all take a couple of weeks to really kind of master um, i'm in sport mode right now which opens the exhaust baffles uh, changes your engine mapping tightens your steering makes full boost, does a couple of other things, but this thing sounds amazing. If you've never heard of Ghibli or any current Maserati, they all sound absolutely amazing. The GTs sound amazing, um, the Ghiblis, the Levantes, I mean, they, they sound ridiculous. I don't know if you guys can hear this shifting, but this ZF8 speed in this car has these braps between shifts. It's amazing, I love it. Let's see if I can get it to go here. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it, it's wonderful. Power is great. The torque is awesome. The shifts are really crisp. You know, a lot of the automotive press, they really like to be nitpicky about this car. It wasn't very well received when it came out in 2014. Um, and, and even with the updates in 17, like I said, not, not huge on updates. No visual in hand enhancements and no mechanical enhancements but I love this car and if you have it in manual mode a lot of people complain that the throttle was on off wasn't very progressive and I do agree with that if you're in automatic mode uh, but driving around in manual mode and using the paddles this thing is a hoot man it's so so much fun this car is not great at anything right it certainly doesn't lead the class in anything. It's not making the most horsepower. It's not handling the best. It's not getting the best fuel economy. Um, it doesn't have the best all-wheel drive system or whatever, right? It's not class leading in anything. But what it does do best is it's really un-German. And I think that's what the guys at Maserati and Ferrari were going for, is just to make it un-German. Was to make it cool for the guy that's maybe been driving an E-Class for the last 20 years and just wants something different. It's interesting because a lot of people that own the Ghiblis, just doing some research online prior to driving this thing, they love it. They're smitten by their Ghiblis. But the automotive press who gets to drive them for 10 or 15 minutes, like I said, they're usually really nitpicky about the car, you know? Gosh, the power is amazing. The S is definitely worth it, by the way. Uh, I just got out of the base car, the 345 horsepower. And while it was ample, um, having the extra 50 plus horsepower, you know, in, in a car that weighs this much, it's a big deal. I, I don't know that I would buy the base car. I would definitely go for the S. So that's one thing that actually bothers me. Gosh, this thing is so fast, man. It just builds speed so quickly. That is one thing that gets me, though, a little bit is the pricing. 
So like I said, this one's 90 grand. So I'm not really sure where this falls. Does it fall in the A6 5 Series category? Or does it fall in the 7 Series A8 S Class category? Because you can get an A8 for 90 grand. You can get a 7 Series for 90 grand. Uh, maybe not an S Class for a little bit more money. But they're more expensive, a lot more expensive than a similar A6 with you know the same power. Um, maybe a little bit less the S6 and the A6 unless you go with the S6. But the S6 costs about what this costs. They're about eighty thousand bucks, so actually even less. But the S6 doesn't sound like this. Like I said, if you've never heard a Maserati, I mean, you start this one up in your garage and it is just as exotic sounding as any Lamborghini or any Ferrari or anything sounds. I mean, it is just awesome. And aesthetically speaking, I think they hit a home run with the Ghibli. I think it's a great looking sedan. All right, so let's give this thing full beans here. Man, the transmission is just awesome. It's really, really fast. It's very well insulated too. It's really quiet. You don't feel the speed build. And of course the ZF box, man, just the shifts, man. They're just awesome. It's a great daily driver. I would probably get arrested if I owned this car. You really don't feel the speed, you know? It's very well insulated. Holy mackerel! Thing is quick. They're definitely going to need to step their game up at Maserati uh, because the Giulia is releasing, I think, in January. Uh, dealers are getting allocated cars, and when the Quadrifoglio comes out, that's going to have the same base price as the Ghibli, about seventy-two thousand bucks. But it's going to have five hundred and five horsepower. Uh, it's set to do zero to sixty in three point eight seconds and go one hundred and ninety-one miles per hour, which is about a second faster to sixty than this car. Uh, and the top speed on this Ghibli is about a buck seventy-five. So uh, definitely a heavy hitter performance-wise. I've seen some pictures of the interior, and I know a lot of people have been complaining that the interior is kind of cheesy in the Giulia. Uh, so if you're really looking for cushy, maybe you still go with the Maserati. But that's going to be a tough competitor for this car because if you really want Italian and you really want un-German, then you know, the Giulia might be the ticket. So what I think Maserati needs to do is add a little bit more horsepower, maybe make this one 450 to 500, the S, and make the base car 400 and not change the price. Can we do that? I don't know. Usually seems when a high-end manufacturer adds 50 horsepower, they add 10 Gs. So that would be awesome. I think that's the only thing that would make this thing really great. I mean, it's zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Very respectable, but it is a big, heavy car. And to compete in the current marketplace, it's just gotta have a little more oomph, I think, because I think the rest of the package is amazing. I love this car, man. I would be, again, smitten to drive this car. I'd love to drive it every day. I think it has great road manners. The steering feel, it's amazing. It's hydraulic steering. I love the steering wheel, the paddle shifters. I love this red and carbon fiber interior, man. I'm such a sucker for this interior. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. Uh, follow me on Instagram at FlyingLap1. I would appreciate it. And subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate that too. Peace.